welcome back to my channel and welcome to my very first wedding Wednesday. I asked you guys on Twitter if you wanted me to do some sort of little mini wedding series for you. Everybody said yes. Actually one person said no. Who was that one person? I know there's lots of brides to be out there plus wedding videos I think are just really really fun to watch and one of the biggest things that popped into my mind was bridal makeup because this is the one thing that I think I've been I don't want to say struggling with the most but like kind of preparing for and buying things for and just kind of like stressing about when it comes to my wedding because I am going to be doing my own makeup and because I'm such a makeup person it's just really important to me that I get it perfect you know what I mean the resort that we're getting married at they do offer like makeup services so I might get a trial run there but like by the time I do that, it's too late to plan to do my own, you know what I mean? So this is going to be my first installment of Wedding Wednesday, but I have tons of really fun videos planned for you guys. I have just like everything from what I'm going to gift my bridesmaids for their bridesmaids gifts to our wedding favors, what we're going to give our guests to all the white dresses I'm wearing to all of the events that are leading up to my wedding and just like I have so many fun ideas but if there's anything specifically that you guys want to see in this mini series let me know down below also if you have any questions about me or my wedding I'll leave those in the comment section because I am going to be doing a Q&A after the series to answer all of your questions. I have been so busy lately that it's really hard for me to answer every question in the comment section of all my videos. I used to be so good with like answering every single one. And now it's just been a little bit harder because I've been so busy, but I am going to do a Q&A video after I get married, after the series is over to answer all of your wedding questions. I know a lot of you guys have been asking like, where am I getting married and when's my wedding date and all of that stuff. So you'll find out more kind of as this series unravels, but definitely leave those questions down below. This video is going to be a bridal makeup tutorial and I have everything behind me. <laughs> I spent a good like 20 minutes just like digging through, pulling out the products I know I wanted to use. I have some brand new products in here. Um, actually, I, I guess I just have one brand new product. I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. This is a product that when it came out or when it was announced, I was like, that's it. That's going to be my bridal eyeshadow palette because the colors in this palette, they're just so perfect for bridal looks. Like, it just, oh, I can't wait to use this. Originally, in my mind, I thought I was going to use the Natasha Denona Star Palette. But after looking at this palette and seeing this palette, I was like, this is it. Like, there's no question as to any other palette I'm going to be using. So, I have not touched this yet. It is brand spanking new. Today is going to be the first day. But everything else I have used before, actually I lied, this is brand new also. This is the um, Lily Lashes in the Style Miami. These are brand new too. I bought a whole bunch of Lily Lashes and I'm trying to decide which ones I want to wear on my wedding day. The ones I tried last time, I forget, London was the style. They were so pretty and I got so many compliments on it, but I think they were just a little bit too much for my wedding day. So I think I'm going to try these ones today. but. Yeah, everything else is products that I like know and love. This video is going to be really long. I already know because I really want to like show you guys how I'm going to be like using all the products and I want to talk through things and kind of chat about wedding stuff. So it's going to be a long video, but you guys already know that because by the time you're watching it, there will be a timestamp on it. So, okay, I'm going to stop chatting. Let's get started. Okay, so to prime my face, I'm really torn between which primers I want to use on my face. I have so many different primers and I know for sure I need a pore filling primer and then I also want to use like an oil controlling primer. I also, and I don't have, I haven't gotten it in the mail yet, but I ordered um, like a super oil controlling one for my nose because I've had a lot of problems with foundations sticking to my nose for some reason and somebody actually in my last tutorial suggested priming my nose with a MAC paint pot. So I'm going to try that today and we're going to see if it works because the last thing I want on my wedding day is like my nose makeup to be wiping off, you know what I mean? So in this video I'm going to use the 
No Porblum Primer by Touch and Soul. My last tutorial and kind of my most favorite pore filling primer is the Benefit Porefessional. But I have a feeling that that doesn't mix well with some foundations because like I don't know if that's what was causing my nose foundation to wear off or what. So I'm just going to try this one today. Either way, I know I'm going to have to use some sort of pore filling primer. So whether it's this one or the Benefit Professional, I'm not too sure yet. I also have one by Estee Lauder. Um, I really like the Makeup Forever one too. But we shall see. This one is really nice. This is the one I've been using a lot lately. I mean, you can see it's I've used quite a bit of that one. So it does leave your skin really, really shiny. Not shiny, slippery feeling. So I just want to make sure I really, really push it into the pores, fill in those pores. And then the second primer, I'm like 99% sure I'm going to use this one because I feel like it controls my oils the best. Um, the oil controlling one that I ordered from Sephora, by the way, is the Makeup Forever Step 1 Equalizer in the... I think it's called Oil Control... I don't know. But I've heard that that's like a glue stick, pretty much. So... We'll see, but this is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. I really love this. This is like a little baby sample size. Um, during the next Sephora sale, I'm definitely going to order a full size of this again. It's just one of those products that's really expensive, and I find a really hard time like justifying purchasing it when I have so many other primers that I love also. But I think something like Wedding Makeup is the perfect reason to purchase it. That trial size isn't going to last me much longer. So this one definitely controls my oil. It leaves my skin super soft and super smooth. So there's that. I'm also torn between, I have the Garlon Or primer, which is like a firming primer. I'm kind of torn between that one too, but in my mind I'm like, okay, like how many primers should I be using? Like what is there a such thing as too many primers? I'm also going to prime my eyelids at this point in time just because I like to prime everything at once. So this is my holy grail eyeshadow primer. I will definitely be using this. I use this every single day, but for sure I'll be wearing this on my wedding day. It's the NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. You guys who have been following me for a while already know. But I like to rub that in and then also rub it under my eyes so that I can prime for my under. Like I put shadow on my lash line too. So there's that. And then I have the MAC Paint Pot in the color Painterly. I'm going to use this to prime my eyes first, but then I'm also going to use it to prime my nose. I've never done this whole nose priming thing before, but somebody in my comments like sweared by it. She was like, prime your nose with a paint pot. I'm like, wow, that is bizarre. But okay, we're going to do it because usually paint pots are for your eyes, but I mean, I guess use it wherever you want to. Who says, right? Who says you can't use it on your nose? So I'm just going to rub that in. I'm going to use my ooh, Dampen Beauty Blender to just kind of blend that out just a little bit. Okay, so now let's prime my nose. This is so weird. Painterly is probably the color that's closest to my skin tone in the whole paint pot range. It's actually almost dead on in my skin tone. <laughs> so foundation is the thing that I have gone back and forth and back and forth and <laughs> like I cannot seem to make up. I'm actually going to take off my ring by the way because I don't want to get makeup all over it. On what foundation to wear. And I think I've decided on the Lancome Tient Idol Ultra and or the Estee Lauder Double Wear. My issue with Estee Lauder is I'm really afraid that there's going to be flashbacks. So I'm going to test that today. Um, the Lancome I've actually worn in photography before. I wore it in my engagement photos and I really loved the way it looked in those photos. I didn't have any flashback. And that's my biggest concern with bridal makeup is flashback. There's going to be lots of photography, lots of flashes, daytime photos, nighttime photos, professional photos, camera phone photos. And so it's like, I just, I, I don't want that flashback, that mask. So I'm actually going to try mixing these two today to see if that kind of 
works or what. I'm also worried about color. I was originally thinking about getting a spray tan. I kind of think I'm going to skip the spray tan now. Um, I don't know. I just... If I get a spray tan, I have to get more foundation and different concealers, and it's like, that's just so much money. So I might skip the spray tan, but I'm just gonna put like a dot, kind of like a little bit more Lancome, almost equal parts of the Lancome and the Estee Lauder. And I'm gonna mix it together. The colors are very similar. The Estee Lauder one is a little bit more kind of on the peachy side. It's in the color 1C1 Bone. And the Lancome one is a little bit more neutral. It's in the color 210 Buff. I feel like I can wear either one of these and the color looks totally fine on me. So I'm not worried about these colors, but I'm worried about like if I get a spray tan, like what color would I get, you know what I mean? So to be continued on the whole spray tan situation. But for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and blend it in with the Beauty Blender. I feel like with these full coverage matte foundations, a beauty blender just works best as far as how to blend and buff in your foundation. The reason why I like these two foundations is they're long wearing, they're matte, I have oily skin. Um, I am gonna be getting married in like a tropical environment and so I'm probably gonna be sweating. And so I'm a little bit worried about that, you know what I mean? So I definitely want the matte foundation. I know like there's lots of other photography, like foundations that are meant for photography out there, like the Makeup Forever, uh, what is it, Ultra HD, but it's not a matte finish. So that's my problem here. Actually, that looks really good on my nose. The paint pot actually worked well. I'll show you guys a close up when I'm done but <laughs> that blended in really super well. Well, I think my skin looks really stinking good. I'm gonna zoom you guys in so you can see the whole nose situation. Let me turn off the light. I think it looks really smooth. I could definitely go for another layer of foundation, like probably right here just to kind of cover some of this redness. All right, for concealers, I am definitely going to be using the Tarte Shape Tape for concealer. I have two colors. I have the color Fair Beige and the color Light. So Fair Beige, I think I'm going to use on my under eyes. It's just a hint lighter than light. Light is almost my perfect skin tone. So if I want to kind of like highlight a little bit, which I do, I'm gonna use Fair Beige. So that's what I'm gonna use today. I don't wanna go overboard on this. It's super easy to go overboard on it, but then it can kind of start to look a tiny bit cakey if you put too much. I'm also gonna try to avoid dragging it up too far because I do have creasy under eyes. Um, I think especially for something like wedding photos, you're gonna be smiling a ton on your wedding day. So if you're anything like me and you have like really creasy under eyes, um, just put a light layer of concealer like right up against your lash line and kind of focus more like dragging it down just cause you don't want that to crease and look cakey. Okay, I'm also gonna go in with the color light and just kind of do a little bit of cream highlighting. So I'm gonna do a little bit up here, not a ton, stripe down my nose and then right there on my chin, blend this out. I am super impressed with how my nose looks right now, you guys. Like, not only did the foundation actually stick to my nose, like it just looks really smooth and like, it looks really good. To set my under eyes, which I have to do, I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. This can definitely cause flashback if you use too much. So I just dotted like the teeniest bit in the lid and I'm gonna kind of dot it under here. This is the best under eye setting powder I have ever used, you guys. And I know that there's lots of people who have had problems with this, they don't like it, but I love it. I feel like it sets my under eyes, prevents them from creasing, kind of brightens things up a little bit. But yeah, you do have to go in with a light hand with it. And then for all over my face, I think 
So in my engagement photos, I actually used the Too Faced Cocoa Powder Foundation to set my foundation. So I used pretty much two foundations. But that foundation is discontinued. Not to say I can't use another powder foundation, but I also don't want things to look too cakey. And again, I'm going to be sweating. It's going to be humid and I just don't want things to look too cakey. So this I think technically is a foundation. No, it's the Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. So I think you can use it as a foundation if you want. Um, it's by Charlotte Tilbury. I have the color one. So I'm going to use this to set my face today. This might change in the future, but we'll see. This brush I get asked about all the time, you guys, the brush I'm using to set my face. It's actually by the brand Sephora. It's a Sephora Pro brush, but it's discontinued. <laughs> sometimes you can find it on their website. Like sometimes it'll pop up and you can catch it and grab it, but it's a discontinued brush. However, it is my favorite brush to put powder all over my face. So if you're curious, it's this the Fora Pro number 61 brush. All right, so next up is brows. And this is something that I'm still not sure exactly what products I'm gonna use. Today, what I'm gonna use is the Benefit Cup Brow in the color two and the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the color taupe. I think this is a staple for me. I will most definitely be using this. I use this every day. I pretty much have no idea how to do my brows without this product. But as far as like a product to use with that, not to say I have to use two products, like I probably can just use this. I'm pretty positive I'm gonna use the Benefit Cabrow. It's just a matter of what color am I gonna use. So I am gonna get my hair highlighted actually this week for the first time in like two years I'm getting my hair highlighted. I'm so excited. But I almost forget, or forgot, forget, like what my hair looks like highlighted <laughs> because it's been so long. So I'm like, well, what color do I use to fill in my brows? So for today, I'm gonna use two because that's what matches me right now. So the Brow Wiz, I'm gonna use to outline my brows and kind of fill in the tail and just ever so slightly fill in the front part of my brows. And then I'm going to go in with the cabrow and fill in the front part of my brow and kind of this like top section right here. The tail I will keep with the brow wiz. Okay. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. Um, this is really hard for me to do and talk at the same time. So I'm just going to stop talking and then I'll like speed up and show you guys. <laughs> eyeshadow and I am so excited for eyeshadow but before I do that I'm gonna actually put down some translucent powder to catch any fallout I've never used this palette before so I don't know if there's gonna be a ton of fallout plus anytime I do like formal makeup I like to just make sure ugh, I don't mess up my foundation I've tried doing eyes before foundation and maybe I should try it again but it just doesn't work for me for some reason. Like I just, I find it really hard to put foundation on cause I like to put foundation on my, on my eyelids. So I find it hard to do my eyes before my foundation. I know a lot of people do do that, but I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and put some Laura Mercier translucent powder. Now this is different from the secret brightening powder, different powder. Um, but I'm going to put this and I'm going to try to make like a straight line right here. Do you see that? To kind of help me with the, uh, with the, what am I trying to say? Help me with the eyeshadow. Okay. Oh my gosh. This eyeshadow palette is so pretty. You guys, it comes with a brush. I very rarely use these brushes. So I'm just going to set that aside. So it does come with a cream matte. Can I tuck this back? I can't. Okay. 
a cream matte all over lid color called Tempera. So I am going to use that to just kind of get things started. I feel like that's perfect. A lot of palettes um, miss this color or don't have this color. And I feel like a matte cream color is so essential to kind of put down on your eyelids to get everything started. Your eyeshadows are going to blend so much better if you do this first. So I'm really glad this palette has this color. Okay, next for a just kind of transition, let's get this party started color, I'm going to go into Burnt Orange right here. By the way, these do seem a little bit powdery. Like you put your brush in it and see kind of all the kickback on there, which isn't horrible, but just kind of something to take note of. Now I didn't, oh yeah, this, this color is really powdery. I did not partake in the subculture madness. But if you know what I'm talking about, you know that the last palette by Anastasia, the subculture, was a hot mess. People did not like it. It was very powdery. So I heard that she changed the formula on this one back to the Modern Renaissance palette formula. And I own that palette and I like it. So anyway. Okay, with a little bit skinnier brush, I'm going to go into Sienna, which is right next to it. This color is really pretty. It's like a, a warm matte brown. Every color I've used so far is matte, by the way. Yeah, this is quite powdery. Powdery is not a bad thing. Powdery and chalky is a bad thing. But powdery and creamy? pigmented not always a bad thing I'm also gonna drag this down a little bit and kind of fill in this V this outer V and kind of get that color going too I'm not gonna do anything too bold too drastic too crazy because this is wedding makeup and it's not supposed to be crazy I'm getting married I'm getting married at sunset so like I can go a little bit heavier than if it was a daytime wedding, but like I just don't want to go too overboard. Now the one thing I will say is missing from this palette is an all over lid color that truly appeals to me. I really really like champagne-y, like kind of light, crystal-y colors. And there isn't anything in here that's truly speaking to me. I mean bronze is beautiful, but it's not the color that I want. Sultry is really pretty too, but it might be just a bit too dark for an all over lid color. Rose pink is pretty. I actually might try that today. I love the idea of having kind of like a rosy theme to my makeup or like a champagne-y theme to my makeup. Um, I don't know yet, kind of, I don't know, we'll see. But I do like that rosy color. Maybe I'll use that. I did also pull in Urban Decay's Sin, which is a color that's available in their Naked palette, their original Naked palette. And this is just like a single pan version of this. This is my favorite eyeshadow. This is actually the second single pan of this I have purchased. I went through the entire pan in my Naked palette, bought the single, the single pan, went through an entire single pan, and this is now my second one. So this color I think is like the perfect all over lid color. So see that? I might actually do that all over and then go with that in the center. Yeah. I think I'm gonna do that. I really wish there was like a color like this in the palette. I mean, there is glistening and fairy, but fairy almost has like a green undertone to it. Glistening is pretty but it's not necessarily like the color scheme that I want so I think I'm gonna do that I think I'm gonna go in do I have a clean all over lid brush I do right here okay so rose pink Ooh, pig minted holy moly I'm going to go back to the brush I used for Sienna. I'm not putting any more product on it, but I'm just going to kind of 
cut out this crease a little bit more because next I'm actually going to go in with black. So there is a color called Noir right here, which is like a matte jet black. Yeah, that's black. Ooh, it's pigmented too. So I have to be super careful because again, I don't want to go overboard and I don't want to get too crazy, but I do want to deepen up just this crease just a little bit, like just the outer part of it. So I'm just going to dot in it. Like that's literally it. And kind of tap this right here on my outer V and blend it out. the clean blender brush and kind of just blending everything in together because again I don't want that black to be too harsh I'm gonna go back to rose pink now and just kind of focus right here on blending that area where the black ends and the rose pink starts so that it looks nice and seamless okay dipping into Urban Decay Sin now I think I'm gonna put this pretty much covered up rose pink, but that's okay. Maybe I'll just stick to this all over my lid because I know I like it. All right, there's a tiny bit of fallout you can see right here, but overall really not that bad. So I'm gonna dust that all away. And then to really carve out this outer part of my eye, I'm gonna go back in with just the residual translucent powder. I'm not getting any more. And kind of stamp it out. All right, for lower lash line, I'm gonna go into Sienna, back to Sienna. And buff this on my lower lash line. I'm also just gonna bake my smile lines really quick while I'm thinking about it. So here's the finished eyes without lashes and liner. And honestly, like I really do like it. I think it's very classic. It's very pretty. It's not too much. It's not over the top. There's not a ton of shimmer. And I feel like once the lashes are on, it's gonna look really pretty with like a subtle kind of, actually I could wear peach, peach lipstick and just like a nude blush. So my face is looking real white. It must be all the baking powder. So I'm actually going to um, I'm going to do bronzer really quick and contour and all that and then I'll do lashes. So for bronzer, I'm definitely going to use this bronzer. It's the Marc Jacobs Tantastic. This is the limited edition one, but it is not limited edition anymore, guys. It's coming back, which is so exciting because everybody who wanted this couldn't get their hands on it. It was limited edition. It sold out. So I'm really excited that Marc Jacobs is re-releasing this. Um, in fact, by the time this video goes up, it might already be out, which is good. So if it is, I'm going to link it down below for you. I just love the color of this bronzer. I feel like it's not too warm, not too cool. It's really hard to find a bronzer that's like the perfect tone, you know what I mean? And this one, let's zoom you guys back out. I think is one of the best. So I'm gonna tan up my hairline. I'm also gonna drag it down my neck just a little bit. Also while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna go in because I am really afraid that this translucent powder is gonna cause a flashback. I'm just gonna go back to the Charlotte Tilbury powder and put a very light dusting of this on top of all that to prevent any flashback because I don't know it just looks really white on camera at least I'm gonna slightly contour but nothing like crazy I don't want to look you know like drag makeup on my wedding day but I do think it's gonna be important to contour because I got eye boogers <laughs> because you never know what angle or side of your face um, photos are going to be taken on. So I'm going to use the Kat Von D. I don't have like a favorite contour color to be honest, but I think I'm going to use 
this color right here because it has a tiny bit of a gray undertone which I think is perfect for contouring. Oh my gosh, I got an eye booger in my eye. So with this, I'm just gonna very slightly contour and I'm gonna keep it pretty high up. I'm also gonna slightly contour up here, just a little bit. For blush, I'm so torn between Tarte's Exposed, my all-time favorite, and Marc Jacobs' Flesh and Fantasy, which is also really good, one of my favorites. They're both nude blushes, so let me show you. So here is Tarte's Exposed, here is the Marc Jacobs one. The Marc Jacobs one has a little bit of a sheen to it, whereas the Tarte one is matte. And that might be the deciding factor for me, so I'm just gonna swatch them next to each other. Ooh, the Marc Jacobs one is much lighter in color, which I never noticed before. I mean, they're nearly identical as far as color goes. I think Exposed maybe has a tiny bit more of a pink undertone, whereas the Marc Jacobs one has a little bit more of a peach undertone. I think I'm gonna go with Exposed just because it's my favorite. I know I like it. It's beautiful. I just think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Exposed, so. I don't want to go too overboard on highlight just because like it's my wedding day. I'm going to be, pho be photographed a lot and I'm probably going to be sweating a little bit anyways <laughs> because of the humidity. So I think this is going to be perfect. It's the Smashbox and Casey Holmes Spotlight Palette in the color Pearl. This color right here, bomb. It looks so good. It doesn't emphasize texture on your cheeks. It's just the best highlighter, I think. This is kind of what I wear every day as a highlighter. And it gives you highlight, so it, you sh you'll glow in your photos, but it's not enough to make you look shiny or greasy or sweaty. It's not gonna take over your makeup look. It just gives you a tiny bit of a glow. For lips, today I'm gonna test out more of a peachy lip, which is what my gut was telling me to do in the first place. So I'm either going to do a peachy nude or a pinky nude, like it's going to be one or the other. So today I'm going to try a peachy nude. I'm going to use MAC's uh, Peach Blossom lipstick, which is like my favorite. It's my favorite lipstick, which is why my gut was telling me to go with it. And then for lip liner, I'm going to use Bite Beauty's number 10, which works really well with it. I think this all ties together really well. The color of the lips is perfect. It's not too much. It's not competing with the eyes. It's all kind of in the peachy range. I think this looks really good. So now it's time for lashes. Finish up these lashes. The reason why I did my whole face first is because I actually want to set my face. And sometimes when you set things like mascara and eyeliner, they get flaky. So I'm going to set my face really quick before we move on to lashes. I'm going to use two setting sprays because why not? The first one is a matte setting spray. The second one is the Urban Decay All Nighter. So the Locket by Kat Von D is a matte setting spray. I really do like this setting spray a lot. So, and then I'm going to go in with All Nighter. I think I'm actually going to press this in too with a beauty blender just to make sure it's really, really in there. Alright, last step is going to be lashes. Now I already put some mascara on just to kind of get my lashes started, but I'm definitely going to be wearing falsies on my wedding day just because they look so much better in photos. I mean this looks great, but if you really want to take your eye look from 0 to 100, add some lashes. It's just a matter of adding the right lashes. So these, like I was saying in the beginning, are the Lily Lashes in the style Miami. These are mink lashes. They do make them in a faux mink formula, but these themselves are mink. So here's what they look like. They're very like 
fluttery and kind of like wispy. From what I hear, these are Kim Kardashian's favorite lashes, which I could care less about, but if it works for her, hey, it might work for me. I don't know if I'm gonna have to cut them, which is what I'm doing now. Measuring them against my lashes. I think I do have to cut just a tiny bit off. Not a whole lot, but yeah, I'm gonna have to cut off just a bit. All right, for lash glue, I'm gonna use the House of Lashes glue. Again, I'm kind of undecided on this glue because it does have like an iridescent kind of pearly finish to it. I ordered um, the black version of it just to see. I haven't gotten it in the mail yet, but it does work really well for a glue. <laughs> Pretty, but I feel like there's still too much for wedding makeup like that really takes over my whole face they're just so long so I don't know I might try out a different pair next round to see if there's like something that's not like this the lashes almost go all the way up to my eyebrows like they're just really big they're super pretty though so I did also do a small line on top of the band just to kind of fill in any gaps, but honestly, the band of these was so perfect that I don't feel like that that was necessary. This is one of the best banded lashes I've ever worn before. So for my waterline, I was kind of torn between brown and black. I think black might be a little bit too much, especially with these lashes. So I'm just going to go in with brown and put that in my waterline. All right guys, so here's the finished look. I'm gonna actually do my hair and change my shirt just so we can see what it looks like when I don't look like scrub, um, and I will be right back. Okay guys, so here's the finished look with my hair all done, and I think the lashes look less dramatic when I have like my hair done and I'm wearing like not pajamas, you know what I mean? But I'm definitely gonna try out some more lashes just to make sure, because these are Pretty dang dramatic. My hair is so flat. I'm getting it done this week, thank God. I think I already told you guys that. See, this video is so long that I don't even remember what I talked about at the beginning. Also, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around this long. I know this is a long one, um, but I feel like it's important that it's a long one. So, anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. If you guys have any tips and tricks for wedding makeup, also leave that in the comment section down below. And I think that's about it. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.